The 2021 Visionary Principal of the Year Elementary Level and New Jersey recipient of the NAESP National Distinguished Principal Award is Annie Corley Hand. Annie Corley Hand is the principal of Mary K. McMillan Early Childhood Center in Berkeley Heights, where she looks for innovative ways for her students to create and learn. A couple of years ago, we added uh, through a PTO grant, I, I had a big STEM initiative and we bought uh, dash and dot robots for the classrooms and we bought all this steam, all these steam materials and we created maker spaces in our classrooms. And when left to their own devices, kids are pretty amazing at, at creating things. I just, you know, I had done a lot of work, watched a lot of videos and webinars and on, on STEM and just thinking, this is a great thing that can tap into our science program. So we had the iPads and the robots, and they were coding the robots to move, and it was, you know, problem solving, but math, and then we tied it into writing, and they wrote how-to books on how to move the robot. One of the science lessons was create, um, you know, on sound and vibration. So kids were creating instruments. They had all these materials in their, in their maker spaces in their classrooms. So they had to create an instrument that made, this is just an example of one of these activities, that, that created two sounds, two different sounds. Students are not sitting at their desks. They're young children. They need to move around. She has uh, really uh, instituted a program where the children are up and they're moving and they're going from station to station and they're supported when they need to be supported and they're independent when it benefits them to be independent. We want kids to be problem solvers. And, and I think um, too often we just have kids solving problems, you know, on a piece of paper that's in front of them rather than having them to work through the problem solving piece. In addition to the academic needs of her students, Annie knows the importance of meeting their social emotional needs as well. Right now, the social emotional needs of both kids and teachers are really paramount. And, you know, it's almost everything else is secondary. I mean, we go back to Maslow, it's very basic. If we're not meeting those emotional needs, um, none of us can move forward. So I think that that is really our focus or my focus for this school year is really on the needs of teachers and students. I think that Annie sets the, the, the tone uh, and the standard uh, for how staff interact with children, parents interact with children, and how children interact with each other. The school is really about um, embracing developmentally appropriate practice for kids. Um, we have worked really hard at reminding ourselves that yes, people have higher expectations, the common core standards have higher expectations for kids, but a five-year-old is still a five-year-old and a six-year-old is still a six-year-old and we have to treat them as such. So we work really hard at providing a program that is yes, academically rigorous, but also mindful of the way kids learn best. She doesn't just push for us to move them forward academically. It's like all about social, emotional, behavioral needs as well. And she makes that very obvious in the culture of our school. One of the ways she addressed the climate in her school was bringing in her Labradoodle Timber as the school's comfort dog. I did have some reservations when uh, Mrs. Corley had this idea that we were going to bring a dog into uh, into the school with our students, and I could have been more wrong. She's she's great with the kids. She'll sit on the floor in the morning during arrival and, and let the kids come and pet the dog, and she'll just hang out and talk to them. I learned so much about them, uh, you know, just this morning. Whose dog went missing, somebody's frog died, a mom's sick, a grandmother's really ill. You know, like, you learn all this stuff because I'm sitting there you know, with the dog having conversations with kids. He is literally top dog. Um, you walk around and you can ask kids what my job is, and probably 75% of them will tell you it's to take care of the school dog. The things that I've witnessed, you know, with the dog working with students and just welcoming students even this morning um, is, again, creates that positive culture. The feedback from parents is so positive. I mean, we had, I had a little girl, um, cried every day and I just remember the dad saying go see the puppy go see the puppy just to get them in the door and and so that's really where he's been um really helpful too and it's not just timber the kids love it's Mrs. Corley they adore her <laughs> uh you know she really is um 
she's not just an instructional leader, uh, but she has um, a real maternal way uh, with all of the children in this building. And I think every one of them knows that she really cares about them. She's a very caring person, and she really looks out for her staff and students as well. I just think she is such a professional, polished, passionate educator um, who is tireless in her work to make this school as, as good as it can be. Thank you, everyone. I'm so honored to be here today and truly grateful to the, be the recipient of these awards. I had the distinct pleasure of attending the National Distinguished Principals Honor last week in Washington, DC, and it was truly an unforgettable experience. Um, I'm especially grateful to a few people who support is the reason I'm here right now. Um, while I was exploring educational leadership programs many, many, many years ago, a colleague came back from her program interview at the College of St. Elizabeth and informed me that I had been assigned to her cohort. Well, despite not having made my own choice or decision yet, Jerry Schaller, my former superintendent, had apparently made it for me. I never looked back. Judy Ratner, <laughs> when Judy hired me in Berkeley Heights, I couldn't believe my good fortune. As an early childhood educator, nailing a preschool through grade one principalship was absolutely a dream come true. So while I'm proud of many initiatives I've had the freedom to implement under Judy's tenure, the addition of Timber, our school dog, is probably the most popular and quite frankly, the only one that MKM students care about. So just a little story about how Timber did come to be. Um, after attending a workshop on the benefits of therapy dogs in schools at an NJPSA um, fall conference many years ago, I approached Judy and I said, I've done some research. I'm going to adopt a dog and bring it to school. Her response, Annie, I'm not going to ask the Board of Education to approve you bringing your dog to school. So fast forward two years, I'm tenured. I have a few successful endeavors under my belt and I try it again. Perhaps I had just worn her out, but a few months later, Timber, the Australian Labradoodle at just eight weeks old became part of our school community. Tiered system of supports, data teams, win period, monthly precepts, community celebrations, maker space will not be my legacy. It will most certainly be the dog. To Mary Reese and Jeff Graber at NJPSA and my fellow early childhood leadership team who have provided me with so very many opportunities to grow and learn as an educator, I will be forever grateful. Michelle Gardner, my partner in crime back in Berkeley Heights and Scott McKinney, now assistant superintendent, but as a high school principal, my first friend and colleague who supported me through those first years as a principal. The Berkeley Heights administrative team and the MKM staff who have supported me both professionally and personally through some of life's most challenging times. Lastly, my final thanks to my husband, Paul, our children, Emma, a special education teacher, and Ben, an education undergraduate. They are the most tolerant people on earth. My mom, my lifelong cheerleader, and of course, to Timber, who everyone knows is top dog. Thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity and I look forward to more good work. Thank you.